Got a new big screen TV, but find the experience somewhat disappointing yet? It's because the audio not being as immersive as the video portion. Audio is 50% of the home theater experience. Consumers demand larger, thinner TVs. Manufacturers oblige, but there's no place to put the speakers. Manufacturers assume consumers will purchase soundbars or dedicate a home theater system. Soundbars used to be TV extension speakers. Last couple of years, soundbars have really upped the game. Some of the top tier models rivals the entry level dedicated home theater setups. You can go the budget route, two to five hundred dollars, and it'll sound better than the TV speakers. It's okay for sports, game shows, news, TV series, but the sound will still be mediocre, since most of the price will be in a cabinet and not allocated towards electronics and speakers. For a better sound, you need to spend at least one thousand dollars and upwards of two thousand five hundred dollars for full-blown surround bars with the subwoofer. Sweet spot is normally under $2,000. Paying more than $2,000, you might as well start budgeting towards a dedicated home theater setups, which start at around $3,000. Key features the Samsung 990C. It's 11.1.4 surround sound soundbar. So it's got 11 channels of surround sound, one subwoofer, and four Dolby Atmos speakers. It's got space fit, which has inside the soundbar and the subwoofer to provide for automatic room correction. It's got adaptive surround, which provides for expanded synthesized Atmos from non-Atmos material. It's got Alexa Assistant built in. It's got Bluetooth and wireless connectivity. You can use the TV remote to control the soundbar volume. And you can also have the soundbar turn on and off automatically with the TV set. The speakers are designed to blend seamlessly with the subwoofer. We have 656 total watts power output, which is enough for very large rooms. Active voice amplifier. And this adjusts speakers to overcome outside noises, like a vacuum cleaner. It's got the usual things like voice, bass, and night modes. We have audio sync, so you can sync the audio to your video if they're not in sync. And it's got a symphony function with select Samsung TVs. Let's go over the soundbar in a little more detail. In this small enclosure, you have the home theater processing components, HDMI switching, 15 speaker cabinets, 15 speaker drivers, 15 amplifiers, wireless modules, and multiple power supplies. The soundbar has very high quality components, speakers, and attention to design details. I'll provide a link that shows you a YouTube video showing the teardown of the soundbar itself. As the video shows, the soundbar has 15 quality drivers. Each driver is housed in its own individual damped enclosure. The speakers are well made with large magnets. Individual enclosures are tuned to each driver and the individual enclosures also stop sound wave distortions. Most of the full range drivers are horn loaded for increased sound output while using less power. This explains how the soundbar can get very, very loud. Each of the right front, center, left front channel speakers has three drivers. Two overwoofers and one inverted dome treater. The overwoofers provide more speaker cone area than a round speaker, so you get more bass in a small area. Inverted dome treaters are for improved efficiency and dispersion. These are more costly components, which also equal better sound. The two top-mounted full-range atmospheres have directional horns pointed toward the listener. This provides both overhead and height surround. It lifts the other speaker sound upwards to better surround and develop the listener. Otherwise, the surround sound will seem emanating too low. The two front sides as wide as your sidewalls are, as the sound bar itself is only 48 inches wide. The side speakers relies on surround reflecting off the walls and for the Atmos drivers to provide the additional height to provide for the immersive surround. The two angled front side speakers provide the illusion of having front side wall mounted speakers. Again, the reflection off the walls and the Atmos drivers provide for the height to make the sound so real. We also have 15 amplifiers, 
one for each speaker. Each speaker gets 18 watts except for the treater, which gets 10 watts. So we have a total of 246 watts in the front soundbar. There are two rear satellite speakers. Each cabinet has three horn-loaded drivers with three amplifiers producing 105 watts. Top driver is the Atmos horn-loaded driver and is pointed forward. The front drivers are the left and right rear surround channels and is pointed towards the listener. The side drivers are aimed at the sidewalls, acting as the rear sidewall mounted speakers. It is important to position the rear speakers so the side speakers are pointed towards the walls and not at each other. The Atmos speaker provides the rear overhead which meets the front overhead sound for 100% coverage. The Atmos speaker also provides height to the rear sound effects and extends the surround up and around meeting the front channel speakers. The result is 360 degree surround on both the overhead and around the sides. It's like sitting under an umbrella with sound coming from all angles. Samsung arguably is the best at providing this 360 degree seamless surround sound coverage. The subwoofer consists of an 8 inch driver with a large magnet assembly enclosed in a well damped and braced cabinet. It has a 200 watt amplifier. It's compact and slim much like a desktop computer so it's easy to place and not an eyesore. Here are my sound impressions after using the soundbar for a few months. The front channel speakers have two overwoofers which provide for solid bass into the lower, mid, upper bass regions. So those sounds do not have to be handled by the subwoofer. Nothing worse than hearing voices and surround track coming from the sub. The inverted dome treater is for the mid highs. Overall, the sound is outstanding for home theater and great for music content. The three front channel speakers sound better than most dedicated $500 speakers. Sound is clear, transparent, accurate, low distortion, and good spatial placement. It's distinct in price placement of sounds all across the front. Stereo music is excellent for the casual listener. It's clear, clean, airy, accurate, and fairly good sound stage. You can select adaptive surround and be further ruled. The sound stage would widen, additional adding height. The adaptive surround would also capture Dolby Atmos recordings or synthesize Dolby Atmos from regular two-channel sources. Dolby Atmos music is actually game-changing. Synthesized Dolby Atmos is very convincing, though once in a while it can be somewhat exaggerated. My impressions of the surround effects when the rear satellites are, are engaged, I mean, it's just wow. You can hear clear, pinpoint surround sound coming from all around you. There's no break in sound front to back, overhead, or around the sides. It's a complete enveloping surround sound. It sounds so weird that sometimes I find myself reacting to it, turning around when I hear voices or sudden sounds like creaky noises. Noises panning all around you, front to back, side to side, and diagonally across. It's a pretty wild experience. My room is about 400 square foot, 8 foot ceilings with 4 walls. It's asymmetrical where the right side of the walls is further away than the left side. While you could only adjust channel levels left and right at the same time, sound fit will make the adjustment to the right side so I still get pinpoint imaging from sounds on the right side. The bass is deep, tight, well-defined, and low. It's musical, not bloaty, loose, or boomy. My ears tell me that it's pretty flat to right around 30 hertz. Bass output is very high. Any lack of bass is due to improper subwoofer placement or calibration. Subwoofer placement is very crucial, so you have to move the subwoofer around the room, different positions and orientations, because a lot of rooms have what we call bass nulls or bass cancellation effect. Now, if the placement of subwoofer does not work out in your situation, well, you have controls that you can work with. So on the SmartThings app, go to the equalizer setting, and here you could increase the bass level. Be careful though, you don't want to increase the bass level too high, otherwise voices will come through the subwoofer. You don't want that. Next, we could go into the device settings menu, go to channel level, and here if you decrease your center channel, this in fact increases the satellite and surround channel and subwoofers. So you could play around using channel level settings. Next, we go to the woofer, and you can increase the woofer, and this is just for the subwoofer, 
to the setting that's most pleasing to your ears. Then you go to advanced settings and we got bass enhancement. Kick this on. Bass enhancement kicks up the bass at lower sound levels, but you can also leave the sound full time for getting wallop on your bass. Now, if you're trying to decide between a sound bar or a dedicated home theater system, this probably depends on your room size, the room configuration, and the budget that you have. Now, a sound bar works best if the room has at least three walls and it's got a flat ceiling. If your room has vaulted ceilings or a two-story ceiling, well, you may want to go with dedicated home theater. Likewise, if your room has an open concept design, you know, you may want to go with home theater system because you have more flexibility in being able to place multiple speakers around your listening environment. Another consideration is that if you have your flat screen above a fireplace, there's no room to put a soundbar between the fireplace and a TV set. So in this case, you have to go with dedicated home theater system with, you know, built-in speakers into the walls. One more note, if you have like a 10-foot screen, a soundbar probably not going to be a large enough presence for you to match the size of the screen. And you may want to go with full-blown home theater system at that point. If you're in a situation where your rear speakers are set far away from your listening position, like I mentioned before, you can use the channel level on your SmartThings app to bring down the center channel, which will, in effect, bring up the rear channels. Here's my final impressions of the Samsung Q990C soundbar. Here's a link at the frequency response and comments done by CyberShack. Note the near flat for soundbar is from 30 to 20,000 hertz. This explains the great sound coming out of the soundbar with no large dips or peaks that degrade the sound. This is hard replicated by a quality standalone speaker and this is done by a soundbar. Likewise, here's a link by ratings.com. And that backs up my and CyberShack's observation. Note the lack of distortion and compression, even at very high volumes. This would be unusual for a bookshelf speaker and almost unheard of from a soundbar. Now let's check out what kind of output level we'll get by turning up the volume of the soundbar. In my room, it can get very loud with no distortion or clipping. I got 87 dBs at level 18 and 95 dBs at level 40. It's hard to believe how much output there will be at level 100. To put this in perspective, THX reference levels are at 95 dBs, 105 dB peak. This Samsung soundbar hits those reference levels. There's not too many home theater systems out there that can manage this, and definitely not from a soundbar. Also, bear in mind that 85 dBs can result in some hearing loss and that's about equivalent to a gas lawnmower running so it's pretty loud. Imagine combining a full-blown dedicated home theater system into four small compact cabinets. Imagine the sound quality rivaling and beating budget home theater setups without all of the wiring, speaker boxes, and hassles of setting up. Imagine perfect Dolby Atmos and regular surround material without any of the setup and tuning needed. Just plug and play. There's no running test tones, rearranging speakers, and possibly still not getting the full Atmos effects. Imagine all of this at $1,600 list price. Still too expensive? Samsung often has sales, which drops the price to around $1,200 to $1,400. Samsung also runs promotions, so if you are in education, a first responder, or a AAA member, they often run promotions that drop the price to around $800. So can it make sense to join AAA and get the discount? You can also subscribe to something like Slick Deals and they'll notify you when these promotions are being run. Also, I've noted that Root.com, which is part of Amazon, which is an authorized reseller of the Samsung Soundbar, has promotions once in a while that's right around a thousand dollars so you may want to keep an eye on root.com also. So I've mentioned a few ways where you get hold of this incredible soundbar at an incredible price so pay due diligence and keep sharp lookout for these price drops. For me the soundbar puts to rest any negative images of past soundbars. The Samsung Q990C has been universally claimed by almost all the reviewers to be the best soundbar regardless of price. Most negative sightings on forums are due to improper setup and speaker placement. There has been no audio dropouts like the previous generation. 
It is also important to set up your TV to your speaker output correctly to properly communicate with the soundbar. There may be more expensive units out there, though more expensive does not necessarily mean better sound. But at a certain price point, when the price starts to approach $3,000, you're better off with a dedicated system. I use a soundbar to watch sports and surround, streaming services and movies. I fire up my dedicated home theater for blockbuster movies, but that is becoming less and less. This soundbar is that good. These new generation soundbars are vast improvement over previous generations and can rival dedicated home theater systems. They are compact and packed of a lot of technology into a small package. In 2024, the Q990D will be arriving in late spring. It will have HDMI 2.1 input, so you do not have to plug your game console into your TV to get 4K 120. But I don't think it will have VRR built in. There will be a couple more surround tricks effects built in. It will be unknown if it support dual subwoofers. And this is about it. The intro pricing will be at full manufacturer's list price. So if you don't need these additional features, and most of you won't, just get the 99QC at a closeout pricing. In comparison, there are speakers like the Sonos, which may be slightly better for music, but in all other areas, the Samsung is better, and it's for half the price. The Sony is good again, but it's much more expensive and it has no center channel. JBL, Bose, LG, and Vizio are just not in the same league as the Samsung. As you could tell, the Samsung 990C is a tremendous value. From the artificial quality base, to the clever use of the angled front and rear surround speakers to create a wall of 360 degree seamless surround sound to the pristine center channel sound quality that can rival any dedicated center channel speaker out there. So use all the research I've done and just go out and buy the sound bar. In part 5 of the series, I'll provide other clips of the deep bass the clarity of the center channel and the difference of having the depth of sound on and off. So stay tuned. From a home theater enthusiast, highly recommended. I hope you found the information informative. Please click the like button. When you have a chance, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.